Okay, I think it's working. So hi everyone, and thanks for joining us today. Uh, we were planning this workshop for some time already, of course, but finally it's happening today. And while we are waiting for others to join, let's wait for a couple of minutes. I'd like to mention that today all questions to Katya and Valeria are very well like welcomed and will be answered after our live. So make sure to ask them uh, in chat in on YouTube or LinkedIn. Um, and uh, actually today we are gathering because we want to understand how to actually hire right talent for your remote team, for your e-commerce brand and how to manage your team effectively and not fail in the end. So if you have any troubles with this, um, today is the day to ask all your questions. Um, right now, I think I can give a mic to Katya and Valeria and we can start. Girls? Awesome. Yeah. Hi, everyone. We are so excited to be here finally and to share our knowledge uh, from years of working, years of remoting and managing, uh, managing remote teams and so on. And yeah, let's, let's get started. And we would like to start just uh, sharing a couple of words about us, who we are and why we are here and representing this. So Katya, we'll start. Hello, everyone. I'm Katya. I'm a managing director of Visory Group. I've been in, um, let's say, I've been hiring for the past 16 years for different remote teams as well as the on-site teams. Um, um, I had my own agency in marketing, so I have a lot of insights to share with you today. Awesome. And then uh, let's, let me represent myself a little bit. So I'm working uh, around for 14 years in uh, on this industry. I have been, I have uh, written one book yet still. Uh, I work as an operations manager and uh, kind of like business development manager and um, traveler in my spare time just because working in the remote industry, managing the remote team, I work remotely as well. And this gives me an opportunity to travel the world. And yeah, I try to popular, popular uh, remote work as much as I can. And today we're going to um, to say much more about this. And uh, hopefully you will feel that it's uh, easier for you to manage your remote teams. And yeah, we are here to answer all the questions. So let's start with this um, kind of like um, note. So what is actually remote work? And Katya will share some kind of uh, yes. so, what, what expectations and reality so remote work now is very popular and especially with the COVID and everything but a lot of people are still not completely able to work remotely and a lot of people are still thinking that working remotely means there's no schedule you work from from the beach drinking cocktails and uh, you can work whatever you want and you can make a lot of money but we i guess there are a lot of people working here remotely and we know that it's not and it's very important to organize everything and have a schedule and uh, so on right and then uh let me share a little bit more about actually difficulties when managing remote teams just because it's it's not easy it's not more difficult or it's not easier when launching offline like normal team in office but there are some tips and tricks and so on so let's start with some problems <laughs> so uh the first one is um hiring the right resources we'll be speaking about this later in details katya will show you all how to do this but it's actually an it's an issue and it's issue number one, because usually uh, when business owners are encountering these problems, um, saying like my team is not effective or something is going wrong, basically the reason number one will be whether you hired the right resources or not. And yeah, as, as I mentioned, we will be speaking about this in details later. Number two is that usually you don't have any clear roles tasks and responsibilities and so on is it's, it's a little bit harder to set clear expectations and uh, roles and responsibilities and so on when you are dealing with a remote team when you are working in remote environment number three low productivity again when we are working when we don't see each other when we are located in different time zones 
and so on, it's very easy to stuck to just lose yourself somewhere and to lose the track of your progress and so on. So basically this is, and yeah, Katya will continue. <clears throat> so lack of communication, again, I, I will repeat, because we working remotely, and sometimes if, if when we're working in office, it's very easy that you can come to your colleague or to your employee and chat or check on them and stuff when you working remotely and it's it's much harder to communicate. And the fifth point is the social isolation. I think with the COVID, we all experience that right now. And when working remotely, it's very important to have different activities that will bring team together, not just on the work. But I will I will explain it uh, more in details. Yeah, so that was the five main, uh, just main issues. It's not only five, there are a lot more, but we decided that these are main uh, because we have a limiting time today, so we can obviously share everything, but these are the main stuff. And this is for you to know, to realize that there are some issues which you need to resolve. So it's better to be prepared. It's better to know so that something can go wrong. And right now, let's continue. And I mean, we are going to show you as much as we can how to make your team great again and how to successfully manage your remote team. So, uh, and... Yeah, Katya, this is yours. Yes. So the first one is the hiring the right resources. So there are a lot of issues coming when you're looking for people and hire them remotely because also you can't monitor them as well as you do in um, in the office. So there are a few points here and uh, you can see on the screen and also a few points I will add. So the first one is the a different time of time management. So when you hire remotely, you need to make sure you set up the uh, the times when the person works and that when the person is available. We're all looking for flexibility, and that's why a lot of people are getting a remote job because they can go out to the doctor or pick up the kid from the school and so on. But it's all needs to be everyone needs to be aware if they're out of office if or if they on on the place. Um, they, when you hire someone, you need to make sure that they are able to follow written procedures and um, and the, the the company rules and so on. It's good when people already have an experience working remotely, but not all of them do. And a, a lot of great talents don't do. So that's where you come. And if talent is really worth a hit, then you need to make sure that you give them enough time to get the to get into the flow the communication using the on the telecom technology that's another thing that is harder because when we work in an office we have when you communicate with the people it's not just uh, the verbal communication it's also a bit more that the energy you can see how people behave when on the calls you know always can see this so and uh, when you hire a person, when when an account, what to look in the candidates is that they match values and the culture of your company, that they have this drive that's going to be bringing values to your team and to the business in general. And uh, another point that I didn't add here is first is hire fast and fire fast. If you see the person is not a good match, you should let them go straight away. Otherwise, it's going to affect your team and affect your productivity. And another one, sometimes you, if you see the potential in a person and if person is, you feel like it's a really good match and you see the drive and you see that the attitude is right, sometimes it's more important than skills. So you, I usually give them a chance. That's it for the first. Yeah, and I will tell a little bit more about setting uh, clear expectations early. <laughs> so uh, it's about roles and responsibilities and perspectives. That's very important to um, talk to the person when you are just hiring about the strict, more or less, 
list of uh, their responsibilities and uh, which is more important even for practice. In my experience, I had a situation when um, we had a very fast hiring, uh, we were scaling very fast and I need uh, to hire lots of people during the short period of time and it was not enough time to um, make a clear adaptation for everyone, to work with everyone like one-on-one -on -one and so on. And I uh, used the standard procedures and so on. And then in three months or something like this, the candidate just reached out to me saying like, okay, uh, it's been three months of my work. So how can you evaluate my work? Uh, how, can, how can I go further? What kind of... Uh, what kind of contract revisions we can do and so on and so on. So it's very important, not for all types of employees, that's important to know as well, because uh, probably, I mean, Katia, maybe we can uh, share more details about this if we have enough time, about different types of, uh, different types of employees. Yes, so there are some people which are just enjoying doing repetitive daily routine work and that's fine for them. They will have their salary, they will have their, um, stable uh, work hours and it's fine it's okay for them there are another type of employees uh those who are very ambitious very dr uh, driven like uh results driven and they need to have challenges all the time and um they will uh, go to you they will speak to you saying like okay uh, how can i improve myself how can i do something and so on and so on so um it's important to evaluate the type of uh, employee from from the very first uh, site and then uh, to adapt the roles and responsibilities and perspectives for them, especially. Speaking about work hours as well, that's definitely something which Katya just mentioned. It's about some strict work hours, which should be, even though we are flexible. We need to know that our um, team members are available in a particular time to communicate with them and so on. Uh, it's important to estimate uh, and to uh, define the communication system, how we communicate in our team. Uh, for example, uh, in my teams, I use like Zoom for uh, conference meetings, Slack for instant messages, uh, Gmail for uh, email exchange and so on. It's important, yeah, so uh, so that you will you will not have a possibility when in your Viber or, or WhatsApp messenger, all of a sudden your uh, team member messaging you in the middle of the night or something like this with a question, yeah. Um, key projects and deadlines as well. If it's possible, if you are in this structure where you can have project structure and so on, it's impossible to define the key project which we are doing and the three deadlines. It means that it keeps the employee organized. It keeps them motivated enough. Uh, scheduled meetings, I mean, this meetings which uh, is mandatory for uh, taking part in these meetings. Uh, it's important for a team. It's important for all the team for keeping them organized and keeping them as one uh, one team, like very united and so on. So next one, I will tell a bit more uh, about creating well documented procedures. This is something which Katya mentioned in her very first statement as well. Uh, now we know that hiring a remote professional, they need to uh, they need to know how to follow the written procedures. Why written? Just because we don't have any other methods. Yeah, because we are remote, we are online. But here is very important to keep the balance because having like um having too much of different documents and all the separate documents is describing some particular part in your organization or project that's overwhelming and this can have a negative impact not something which you are expect to be so um first of all let employees create sops uh standards operation procedures by themselves they know uh what they are doing on a daily ba basis better than you yeah. Next, uh, let let them continuously update them because usually we are changing uh, our workflow, changing some credentials, passwords, changing links or something like this. So it's, it's important to update them, but not over complicate. Yeah, because it's very easy to get uh, just stuck in there with these documents and to forget about the progress and so on. So that's about the uh, SOPs, and then yeah. 
Katya will help us to understand. Yes. Next one is, sorry, interrupted. No, no. Okay, yes, the so next one is uh, chicken often, but no, don't micromanage. Micromanagement, I believe, is the killer of the business for two reasons. The first of all, because people don't feel independent and they lose the drive. And the second is when you micromanage, you spending so much time of your own that you can't do what you're supposed to do. So in, in order to make your business successful with, uh, with the right team, the first one is prevent employees overloading because employees overloading is bringing burnouts, it bringing uh, deadlines not follow, being not being followed up and in the end of the day, no one will want to work with you. Um, the second one, email management. So when your employees are having a, a communication with another party, they don't need to put you in every, copy in every email because they do what they do, what they know the best, So and then they just report to you. And recognize excellence as well as uh, point the mistakes but it, this is very very sensitive topic uh, for the mistakes when we're all humans we're all making mistakes and we're making them mistakes as leaders people making them as uh, employees and everyone is making them so if they do see if you see the mistake and if it's not crucial or it's not repeated you talk about this you bring it up in the soft way and try to help them because as a leaders as well you are there to to help them to make them grow as well as you as a team you have a whole common goal there is no one against each other and recognize excellence is one of the most important things that i experienced myself as as an employee in many companies when you do something bad people tell you when you do something good people just take it as it is it's very important to tell people that they're going doing a good job because we all love it. Yeah. And my favorite one is the make sure that your employees are taken care of. This is because I'm a big advocate for the mental health and remote work is hard on many people. I mean, I think on most of the people, some people are enjoying this kind of secluded life, but most of people don't. And because the work is 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 a very big part of, of our life. And usually when we come to the office, we have our work friends, work buddies, you communicate with people, you exchange the energies, you exchange the, some even private things. But when you're working remotely, it's it's impossible. So it's very hard to make your the on online friends work buddies so here you come with the activities which are very very important to have is the happy hour for example we did it in um, a viceroy group is the one hour a week when you meet all together everyone is camera on and you chat about anything but work it brings it it builds builds the team it makes people be warmer to each other as well to know each other from the different sides not just the working ones um then we have um one-on-one -on -one calls so maybe once a month or bi-weekly it depends on your or intensity of work and depends on the, how big your team is you have one-on-one -on -one calls when you discuss everything so you discuss the work maybe troubles maybe some people have issues with they colleagues that they can share with you or maybe they have some problems at home that they can talk to you about or ask you for anything and those are very important to show that you care diversity is i think in 2022 is very obvious that we we hire i mean we hire everyone but also what a lot of companies don't understand is when when you hire people from diverse backgrounds or yeah, I think backgrounds is, is enough. You need to adjust your company rules to it as well, because some people need extra days off. Some people need, um, maybe they can't use the camera on because they can't be seen and so on. So make sure that you, when you hire people from uh, diverse backgrounds, you 
adjust your company rule and you understand. If you don't understand something or you're not sure, feel free to ask them. I'm sure they're going to tell you. Then uh, you can get uh, some tools for Slack, for example, just to remind people to drink water, to do some exercise, to get up from the desk and you know stretch, go for a walk like a wellness coach. It's an app for um, Slack. It can be very useful. And the and last one is a Mental Health Monday. It's something we introduced uh, a few months ago in uh, our company. Once a month, we do an hour of talk about mental health. So people do leave the questions anonymously about what they would love to talk about. You can also invite some psychologists or therapists to help people to take care of their mental health. Yeah, so that was the uh, top five of our um, kind of like uh, techniques, tips, how we take care about ourselves and our employees as well. Because like Mental Health Monday, Happy Hour and so on, that's all about ourselves as well. And now after Katya shared some like spiritual things, I will share a little bit more like uh, technical stuff, reality stuff. Uh, so that's, uh, that's the tools which we use in our company, uh, which we just like during the years of our experience, trying different, different, different software and uh, workflows and so on. We just, uh, for now, we using this and we think that's best for us. So we use Slack as, uh, as I mentioned, as an instant messenger. And moreover, as you know, Slack has lots of integrations, lots of useful integrations, like you can integrate almost everything there. And it's very convenient, very important. You can use it on your desk, desktop, on your mobile. And yeah, I mean, you are uh, online every time, everywhere. We are using ClickUp Mo or Monday or Trello. We are using right now ClickUp for simple project management for a simple task management. Yes, yeah, so these are very easy, very user-friendly software, which you can use for tracking your projects, for tracking the tasks, for everything like this, yeah. Uh, and it's important to divide the uh, task communication uh, between Slack and ClickUp, for example, just because it's very, you don't need to, um, share some deliverables and so on in Slack because it's very easy to get lost in the tweet and all the files which you are sending can get lost and then no one will be like searching them. So it's very important to keep this in ClickUp, for example, if you are using this software. Um, yeah, we are using Google Drive as a universal like file storage. Uh, it's very easy, very convenient and yeah. That's very obvious. We are using Guru as our knowledge base. You can definitely do the same in Google Drive. Absolutely fine. It's okay. However, Google is special, uh, I'm sorry, Guru is special tailored for uh, having this uh, so-called product Bible where you have the description of your products, of your services, and so on. It's very good tailored for this. So these are the main things which we're well, doing on a daily basis. Yes. May I, I, I add a few few more that I just thought about that can be useful. Um, yeah. So the, these are mo mostly for the to run the company, but they're also very useful tools and programs and services that you can uh, look into. If you have a big team and you need to manage a lot of people, there is the tool called Bumble HR which is uh, very, very useful and um, easy to use. And another one, there's two um, payment tools that help you to deal with contracts as well as um, uh, payments to your employee. One is Deal, is one, I think is one of the biggest one. And the another one I use them, it's called On Top. It's uh, these guys are a bit smaller, but they also pretty easy to use. So you can manage your um, contracts through it. You can adjust them, and uh, you can process uh, salaries through it. Yeah, and uh, I guess uh, Daria will be able to uh, duplicate the names uh, which just Katya mentioned in our chat, so everyone will be um, uh, yeah easy to to access this. Yeah, so and 
one um, the last important uh, tip from us be flexible because this is why actually people prefer working remotely yeah so this is about not over managing not micromanaging and not over looking everything and so on so try to be flexible try to trust in your employees more and then you will see unexpected results so that was pretty it for today from our side as usual uh, as i mentioned yeah we do have only 30 minutes so um if you have any questions or you feel like you need some completed like more detailed guideline how to hire the perfect employees for your team how to set up the company structure, how to set up the processes, how to optimize the processes and so on, you can contact us on these emails, which you can see on the screen right now. And yeah, Daria, that's, that's it from our site for today. So yeah. Thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank, thank you very much. Um, switching off to then the presentation. Uh, don't worry, everyone. So you will receive a presentation right away after our call. And actually, yeah, so thank you everyone today and girls for your insights on hiring and like managing a remote team because it's really hard sometimes to be somewhere like live abroad, for example, not near your like team and I understand this. So this is something that's really interesting. And I really like the part where you actually uh, share your insights on making sure that your employees are taken care of. So what I'm going to do is to ask you for maybe some templates of some activities that you run, just that you, that I can share them with others after our call in our community. Uh, maybe some templates, or I don't know, maybe you play some games on during some like team building, like online team building uh, <laughs> calls. Um, we also had some some interesting questions during our live, but I suggest moving this discussion after our live to our commun commerce community on Discord. And actually what I suggest to do, I will gather all like all questions, I will post them there, so you will have time to answer them. And for everyone else, for attendees, if you still have any questions relevant to this topic, uh, feel free to ask them after our live and girls will do their best to answer them and i will do my best to make them <laughs> ask them answer them um i think that's it now i want to thank again to everyone for having like for taking time their time and attending our life and actually stay safe and thank you one more time thank you bye, -bye. thank you bye bye